Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Ultimate Bucket List. And on today's show, I'm here at the largest stadium in Italy. The San Siro, officially known as the Stadio Giuseppe Miazza, is home to two of Italy's most famous and powerhouse teams, AC Milan and Internazionale, otherwise known as Inter Milan. And they play in the biggest stadium in Italy, over 80,000 spectators. And these two teams absolutely despise one another. But what's it like to go to an actual game? Well, I decided to find out for myself. I'm here for the AC Milan Fiorentina game, and as soon as I step out into the stadium, I'm shocked at the size of this place. It's effing massive. There's plenty of places to pick up lots of Italian style junk food, which I gotta admit is a lot better than the stuff we get here in England. Lots of places to buy souvenirs, and this media guy gives me the nod of approval. But as soon as I try and enter the stadium, I'm in a lot of trouble. You see, I bought a ticket at the wrong end of the stadium next to the away fans. And unfortunately, in Italy, you can't sit with the away fans, especially seeing as though I'm wearing an AC Milan shirt. So I was swiftly relocated to a different part of the stadium. And it actually worked out pretty well for me. The seat was a lot better than this upper section where I was supposed to sit next to these Fiorentina fans. So it actually worked out quite well. The match atmosphere here in Italy is pretty amazing. And these Italians certainly know how to cheer on for their team. Listen to them whistle and voice their displeasure to the opposite team. And one thing's for sure, Italians are loud and they're very expressive. So yeah, be prepared for that. If you do get a chance to walk around the stadium, you'll realize just the sheer magnitude of this place. Everything, when you look around, is absolutely massive. No, really, it really is. And this place has some of the best sight lines I've seen. So yeah, you can definitely get a decent ticket and a decent view from everywhere that you sit. As for the game itself, AC Milan played incredibly poorly and they lost to bottom of the league Fiorentina. Fans were even leaving at 2-0. They were that disgusted at watching their team play like crap. Boy, there's a lot of angry Italians walking away from the stadium today. But overall, if you do want to see a football game, I do actually recommend coming here to the San Siro to watch an AC Milan or Inter Milan game, and you won't be disappointed. So the next morning, I decided to go back to the San Siro to try and do a stadium tour. However, so at this point of the video, guys, I'm actually supposed to give you the stadium tour of the San Siro but it's fucking shut. Let me explain. So on Sunday, it was shut because obviously I went to the game that you've just seen me in. Um, and apparently today, it was open up until about 20 minutes ago. So I missed the last tour of the day by about 20 minutes. And this is due to the fact that they're using the ground for training, allegedly. And I'm in Milan for one more day. So I thought, oh, okay, no problem. It's shut tomorrow as well. Are you fucking kidding me? future in here, I actually mouth off quite a lot in this video clip, so I'll spare you the theatrics. In short, Atalanta was playing Shakhtar Donetsk the next day in a Champions League game. So they actually closed the stadium for training and practices, and unfortunately that means that there was no stadium tours. They didn't actually let anybody know, unfortunately, it wasn't printed on the website, nor were there any signs, so that's highly inconvenient. What I can do, however, is quote unquote, borrow some footage and show you what it's actually like to do the stadium tour if I indeed was allowed to go on it. The stadium tour starts outside gate number eight, which is to the left of where you come in from the metro station. And once you're inside the stadium, you get to walk around the pitch level. A tour guide will give you an informational talk about the two teams and about the stadium itself and this is a great opportunity to take lots of photos and ask questions. 
you then get to walk around the pitch and into the interview area, where players are interviewed pre and post match. You also get to visit both teams' dressing rooms. And it's interesting because both teams have different looking dressing rooms. So Inter's dressing room is a lot more widespread and open, compared to that of AC Milan, which is a lot more compact. It feels almost a little claustrophobic, and on site, I actually prefer the Inter dressing room, but to be honest, take lots of pictures of both, because they're actually kind of cool. You get to walk around the stands, take a few seats, take a few pictures, and take lots of videos. Your tour guide will then walk you into the media section. Now, this is the section whereby the press conferences happen. And they do tell you that every time a different team plays there, whether it's AC or Inter, they have to change literally everything, from the stadium boards to the colours to even the lighting. You do get some cool photo and video opportunities of you actually inside the media bit, which is actually kind of cool. You then get one final talk from your tour guide, a last chance to ask any questions, etc., before they frog march you out into the club's gift shop. Now don't get me wrong, it's a very nice gift shop, and rather predictably, one half of it is AC Milan, and the other half is Inter. I obviously didn't buy anything from this shop, seeing as though I was thoroughly hacked off, but yeah, I hope you don't hate on me too much for giving you a synopsis of a tour I didn't do, but, you know, I have to do the best of a bad situation. Okay, Nin, I'm sold. What do I do? Well, firstly, fucking book in advance. I'm not kidding. Seriously. Look on the website, book your tickets in advance, and actually arrive at that time slot. Don't turn up, because most likely they'll, they'll find a way to disappoint you. AC Milan have a tendency to do that. Cost to do the tour? Well, allegedly it's about 18 euros, and that's for a guided tour. And apparently there's um, options for you to guide yourself around, but obviously I didn't get to do that. If you did want to go to a game here, tickets start from about 35 euros. Obviously, if they're playing a top team, those ticket prices increase. Well, to get here to the San Siro, it's dead easy. They've got their own metro stop, and that's the best way to get around Milan, and it's definitely the best way to get here at the San Siro. Is there anything else I need to know? Yes, for the love of God, book in advance, I'm not kidding. Seriously, have a look on the website, book a ticket, book a time slot, and make sure you arrive, because at least then you know that you're actually going to go on the tour, as opposed to trying to turn up during its opening hours, like everyone else, and trying to get in. And if you did want to see the San Siro, I highly recommend you do it quick because they're about to blow it up to replace it with this. The Nuovo Stadio Milano. The new home of AC and Inter Milan. This stadium is a state-of-the-art stadium that they'll shortly be playing in, so if you do want to go, I highly recommend that you do. Boy, this stadium actually looks kind of cool. I hope I get to do a tour there one day and not get turned away. I hope you enjoyed the uh, interior footage of what it's like to come to a football match here in Italy. I highly recommend it. And if you have enjoyed this episode, please be sure to like, share and subscribe. Comment on the comment section below. Try not to laugh too hard. And if, if you've got any other suggestions for bucket lists, tweet them at me. And if I get enough suggestions, I'll go ahead and do that. And if I get enough suggestions for bucket lists, I'll go ahead and do that. So guys, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next episode. So, obviously, half the reason I came to Milan is to do this video for you guys, and it's effing shut. So, as you can tell, I'm a little pissed, really. They could have warned you, they could have stuck up paper signs, or at least let you know on the website, but no, no they didn't. All it says on the website was that it, uh, it closes at 5.30, and it's 4 o'clock now, so that in, th in theory, there's no reason why. Why, why they shut it early? It's not as if there was any notice or anything like that. So, yeah, so...